The opinions and interpretations expressed in this and other videos are that of Marty Huey and may not be representative of his colleagues and employer. The videos cover overlapping requirements of codes, standards, and regulations. Your situation will require full analysis beyond the concepts presented here. Suites within a hospital, I2 occupancy. Both IBC and NFPA have similar requirements. So this video covers the codes before the 2012 implementation. CMS is still under the 2000 NFPA. This video is pertaining to that subject. Once CMS adopts the 2012 NFPA, this will change. They've also got a bulletin which you could implement and change right now. It is rather difficult, but you could. The video after this will cover the 2012 suite issue, but you'd have to be under IBC 2012 and, and or newer and NFPA 2012. Patient sleeping suites shall be 5,000 square feet or less, and if it is over 1,000 square feet, you will have two exits out of that suite. Patient care suites containing no sleeping, i.e. no beds, and non-patient care suites, no patients at all, will be equal to or less than 10,000 square feet. If the suite is greater than 2,500 square feet, you will have two exits out of that suite. The walls around a suite shall be smoke tight. This is not rated, just smoke tight. It is easy to create a dead end corridor using a suite if you're not careful. You cannot exit through a suite. You're not allowed to exit through a room, and that is the best way to think of a suite is just a room with a bunch of rooms or areas within a space. Zero or one intervening room slash space, you will have a travel distance of less than 100 feet in order to get out from the most remote location within the suite to the exit access corridor door. Two intervening rooms slash spaces the requirement is 50 feet or less in travel distance. One of the things to keep in mind is I am indicating here space slash room. The code in the 2012 edition has recently changed the wording to spaces or space. That has always been what was intended but not understood and not what was written and people have manipulated the term so now they have changed the word to space. Many have just removed a door off of an area indicating it now it's not a room because it doesn't have a door. That was not the intent of the code. So let's look at a suite with one or zero intervening rooms. Our travel path to the exit access corridor through one intervening room shall be 100 feet or less. And with two intervening rooms, our travel distance from the most remote point to the door that leads to the exit access corridor shall be 50 feet or less. As indicated above, it is easy to accidentally create a dead end corridor situation by creating suites. Here is the slight indication. So if a stair is within a suite, your other occupants on that floor or area cannot enter the suite in order to exit the building. Therefore, if that is the only way off that floor, you have now created a dead end situation. So let's review. CMS is presently under the 2000 NFPA, 5,000 square feet or less. If the suite is over 1,000 square feet, it will have two exits, non-patient care and patient care suites with no sleeping 
can be up to 10,000 square feet, but over 2,500 you will have two exits. It shall have a smoke tight wall surrounding the suite. If you have two suites that are backing up to each other, such as suite A and suite B here, there shall be a smoke tight wall separating the two. Also, if suite A or suite B if is of sufficient size and requires a second way out, you are not allowed to exit through a suite. They can be connected, but you cannot use it as an exit. You must create a second door that leads to the exit access corridor. This changes once the 2012 codes are adopted. Please post or email comments on what you've seen. Suggestions for future topics are also welcome. Marty enjoys learning from the experience of others. More videos will be added, which can be found at martyhuey.com.